From the high plains of the Midwest, I bid you good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever your time zone might be. My nod to the late and great Art Bell. I'm Keith Sharp. And I'm G. Dressel. And we welcome you to Life After Life, a paranormal webcast where we talk about the paranormal, UFOs, or the unexplained. And the biggest question of them all, what happens when we die? I don't know. What happened to us when we die, Garrett? I can't tell you. What's the answer to that one? That's Um, that's what we want to solve, isn't it, right? Really bad. Okay. Uh, So, Garrett, the other day I was was going through... You know, you know, I'm a huge Art Bell fan, and well, the biggest. Yeah, and I've got. <clears throat> if you guys can't see the studio, but I've got this huge picture of Art Bell up here. Um, and my next thing is, I'm going to get an autographed book that's on cool. the list. Did you ever like think about how well defined his face is? Is that abnormally? Is he a robot? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't look know. at that picture. I know. Yeah. Is that? Yeah, and is it, he, he real? Yeah, he's he's very real. <laughs> he um, was. Very real, in, very real indeed. Very yeah. real. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, so I found this. He's a genius. Uh, he man, he was he was the guy. You know, do you think he started pod like? I he, mean, what we know as podcast today, the biggest podcast in the world. Do you believe that he was like a pioneer in the field? Hmm. I was talking to Larry about this. I don't know because um, he started his podcast. You know, right before he died, he had Midnight in the but Desert. But in the nineties, but he was, in the nineties, he. He was on coast to coast, so it was a huge syndicated radio. Uh, so I don't know if you call it podcast, but I think he definitely started this whole paranormal radio thing for right. sure. Uh, he said he he started out in p- politics and interesting. Yeah, he was a political commentator, and he said he hated it, and he said it was just boring. <laughs> yeah. And he said one evening someone had called up and they said they thought they saw a UFO, and he said we got more phone calls and more interest than we ever had ever talking about politics interesting and so that's how he got the idea so there were a lot of radio shows i remember kind of growing up and listening to some Mm -hmm. but whenever you introduced art bell to me this is before kind of podcast took off yeah it was so kind of unique the way he ran his show oh yeah and like how he talked to people and interacted so that's why i was wondering if you would consider him almost a pioneer Bridging the gap well, between... Well, I mean, I guess it would, it would give people the idea, you know, of maybe saying, God, I'd love to do that. Yeah. How can I do that, right. you know, and without being involved with some million-dollar company that's a radio station. So know. how many episodes do you think he did in his life? Oh, man. Uh, you know, I, I really should know that. Uh, hundreds, oh. probably. Hundreds? hundreds? I bet he did over a 1,000. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. He, well, how often would he air, like... Every well, he day? was on five nights a week. Um, a lot of with coast to coast, so yeah, it, it could run in the thousands, I guess. That's crazy, um, man. Yeah, and the wonderful thing about it, even though he's passed away, and God rest his soul, is we have such a backlog of material that we can listen to. I mean, there's even on a, there's an app called Paranormal Radio, and it has Art Bell 24 hours a day. Really? So you just hit it, and it's I mean Art Bell after Art Bell 24. Can I just tell you the single seven episode? Like literally was one of the most, and Cass and I went back and listened to it in 20, I'm um, sorry, that was 10 years later. You showed us 10 years ago, basically. Yeah. Cause yeah. that was 1997. Yeah. It was 1998, I think. 98. When that came out. And I showed that to you 2015 or 16. Oh, okay. So five years ago. Yeah. yeah. About five years ago. At the other house. Right. Right. And so that was unbelievable then. Well, we went back, a lot happened in the last five years in yeah. forms of technology and what we know. Yeah, and, and the acronym thing. The, oh my god! And then he says he he kind of mentioned the whole uh, Y two K thing before it happened. Oh yeah. And he said it's it's going to be like the sky is falling. It's not going to be. Right. Yeah, it's not going to be anything. Mm-hmm. And so, Neuro, yeah. he also talks about neuro augmentation, which Elon Musk is. Yes, yes. If you listen to Elon Musk talk about it now, I mean, dude, that was twenty two years ago. And He's we're talking not, about neuro augmentation. I know. Yeah, it, it blows your mind. It makes you kind of think. Uh, God, was this guy for real? Was he a real time traveler? But in in forms of like interviews, he was on point. And Art Belichick was trying to trip him up. 
Oh yeah, constantly. Constantly trying to trip yeah, him up. Yeah, because he would he would even say the the year backwards. <laughs> yeah. To see if the guy would agree. Right. And then the guy would say he would correct Art, and Art's going, "You're good." Yeah, you're, you're good. good. Yeah, and then he would he knew where he went to he went to school. I mean, he majored in this and that. Well, I mean, and you you called Art. Uh, I did. Garrett actually called Art Bell. Um, <laughs> in 2015 and he asked him about single seven have you know he asked art have you heard back from him or anything and he said no i haven't haven't he goes he's on the run yeah and he asked him too about uh you know what do you think about that and he's like i don't know but yeah it was you know he goes i couldn't disprove him yep couldn't disprove a thing so and now five years later well really 22 years later since that interview you're looking at it and thinking holy cow how did that guy know some of that stuff i know it's it's mind boggling. <laughs> it's my, for because anybody we, listening, please go look up the single seven art bell. I forgot what it's called. It's just yeah, it's just just put in art bell single seven and you'll you'll it's in there's one on there, the seven parts. There is one is some reason you have to really look for it. It's the complete show on okay. one is it. But yeah, go and listen to that. It's it's uh it's pretty weird. Now this took place when you're listening to it, remember this is nineteen ninety eight. And this guy, it was either a very good con man um, or he was the real deal. As he said, yeah. that one day we will be using acronyms. BRB, LMAO. LOL. TTYL. LM, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's insane. Yeah. He's, and he was, because he, he was, I think what brought that up, he was using an acronym of art. And I right. was like, well, I'm, what? what? I'm, not fo- I'm not following. Yeah. <laughs> and so he's like, well, he goes, well, where, where I come from, Art, he goes, we use a lot of acronyms. Yeah, in the future. And, uh, in the future. And he said, that's a big thing. And I then, caught myself today. I was trying to say thank you. And now when I text people, I just put TY. TY. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's easier. Yeah, it's weird. So if you guys get a chance, you know what? I, uh, Garrett just talking about this because we, we're we doing our show today on a, a Art Bell episode that involved Bigfoot. And I think we need to schedule something. You know what would be good is, you know what would be a good idea is when Larry comes to town yes. is we all three d- discuss the single seven thing. I would love thing. that. Um, I would love it. Yeah, yeah, and then hopefully maybe we'll we'll have a, we can do a live show with that. Have the people to call in. Like I said, we got to phone people, but we got to get a following. So get the word out there about life after life. Because I'm telling you, this is going to be a very very interesting podcast. I think a lot of people are going to enjoy this, and I want you guys to be part of the show. I want all the listeners out there call in, man. Let's 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 talk together and let's let's learn together. So we'll that's another show. Uh, the Man. You know what? And Bob Lazar, how good would show would that be? And for anybody who hasn't seen the Netflix documentary on Bob Lazar, <laughs> go do it immediately. Turn it on, and it'll blow your mind. It will um, blow it, your mind. Yeah, and I'm sure some of our listeners, like I said, you know, the paranormal, UFOs, all that stuff ties in together. So I bet a lot of them are familiar with uh, Bob Lazar. I hope, and like Garrett said, if you're not, go watch that documentary. I wasn't, and I think now it's on Netflix for free. It is. Yeah, when it first came out, I, I paid for it and watched it. Oh, and wow. It, it's so interesting. Right. It's so, and there's so many people that try to prove him, though. Oh, he never worked there. Well, he, don't stop you know. there. Don't stop just at the do- at the documentary. Watch some of the interviews, like the Rogan one. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. listen to some of the stuff, follow-ups and everything. It's. Yeah, well, and uh, Art, I think Art Bell interviewed him three times. Really? Guy never changed the story. And that's one thing Art always said, even, bef- you know, in Art's last year doing midnight in the desert he would say people keep asking me about having balbazar on he goes well he goes i wouldn't be opposed to that he goes but it's going to be the same story absolutely he said this guy never has changed his story here's one thing i want people to really understand too why would this person who had a great job doing some really cool things why would he put all that at risk and he has he really has he has lost like i mean he has no privacy Mm-mm. Nobody believes him. He's everyone's trying to discredit him. And why would he ever even do that? And then now vindicated a bit because yeah. Pentagon starting re- to release some things that clarify well, exactly what, what he was about, saying. Did you see the time that the how they clocked in <laughs> oh, with the, the hand, measurements yes. of the bones to the joint? Right. He talked about that back in the day with Art, and everybody's saying that's just impossible. Well, now he that guy sh- shows him a picture. And he's like, "That's it." Of the yeah, how the he device. Clock, how he clocked in. Larry and- actually. So one thing that Larry said is wherever Larry was stationed, mm-hmm. 
which is Area 52, mm -hmm. is that the, he actually, they had something similar to that. Yeah. Yeah, the guy's not lying. And you know what's more makes him more credible to me? He's never wrote a book. He's never profited off it. Oh, no. Um, he doesn't he even... He suffered from it. Yeah, he did. That's he it. Did. Cause, and and that's, that was the, the sad thing. with and, and even watching the Joe Rogan interview, I felt for him because he kept saying, I'm, I'm having a migraine. Have you not watched it yet? I haven't. You've got to watch yeah. it. And I just, I've seen clips of it, because, but I haven't like watched the whole thing. Right, and he doesn't know Joe. I mean, he, yeah. he probably thinks, I don't know, this guy is going to try to make me look like a fool or something right. like that. He doesn't know Joe like freaking loves him. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. He, and Joe was so happy to have him on. Oh, there. yeah. Great. And you can tell Bob was really nervous during that interview because, um, you know, he, he didn't know what to expect. And he, you know, he's reliving all that again. And he had, you know, the government tap in his phone. And uh, actually, he had to sign a contract. Remember, they talked about that where the government says, OK, we will be tapping your phone uh, because of the national security that we need you. The element 51. Yeah, is it Element Fifty One? I think that's what it was called. We'll have to go back and check. Element One Fifty. Well, here's the other weird thing: is what about the what he thought was the government? It could have been just somebody else going in and rearranging things in his house. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, they even told him that his wife was having an affair <laughs> because <laughs> because they yeah they because they they watch those people at Area Fifty One. I guess their personal lives constantly listening to the phone. So I guess they had played some conversations for him where the wife was talking to the lover, and that's how he said he found out. Well, that they're like his wife was cheating on him. Here, how do you get a job where he was working without having an education? That was the other thing. They erased him from the. the yeah, absolutely. But he, they found him in the phone book. So if you go to the MIT directory, right? Oh no, he never graduated in from Los here. Alamos. Um, he's uh, in the directory there because they tried to to check him out and they you know some a lot of people called los alamos to see if he worked there and he said no we've never had bob lazar there well and that was uh i think what you're referring to the phone book yes 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 the phone list of people and, and there robert it is lazar. robert lazar <laughs> yeah so he's not lying yeah you know oh he's just living in los alamos no big deal yeah <laughs> he's yeah. just for fun just for the heck of it <laughs> You know, and they even did. It, the funny thing is, they they he had built a rocket car, yes, out of hydrogen. And at the time, he was uh, working at Los Alamos, right? So, and even in the the, the newspaper says physicist who works for <laughs> yeah. Los Alamos. And so they did a yeah they did an article on the yeah. on the, his car, the Corvette that he yes, made, yes, which I have video of and all right, sorts of right. Things. So it's just it's just ridiculous. This guy it, is no, definitely telling. The I think truth. the word would be bizarre. Yes. No pun intended, bizarre but it is, <laughs> it is a very bizarre Do you think people call situation. him, hey, that's Bizarre Lazar. Oh, that's crazy Bizarre Lazar. Yeah. Yeah, they talked to somebody. Um, He's the most, like, straightforward, honest, like. Meek kind of meek, guy. Yeah. Um, yeah, just, uh, God. What, well, how, he was like, people need to know about this. Like, right, that's right. why I'm doing this. I'm willing to suffer and give up everything that's good to me because I think the common person needs to know what's out there. Right. And maybe together we can, right? <laughs> yeah. And yeah, the guy, I mean, I feel so bad for him because his life was basically just ruined. It was ruined. It was ruined. I mean, and like you said, he keeps reliving it. It's not just reliving it 30 years later, it's reliving it like every five yeah. years. And if the guy never worked to Area 51, on that video, there's an FBI are raiding his laboratory looking for elements, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, looking yeah. for that element. So that tells you in the documentary, like in while the they're documentary. shooting the documentary, the FBI is raiding his his laboratory, which is about as big as a studio. Yeah, and they're looking for this element. <laughs> yeah, and look it up. Why I talked to the audience for a minute. We we, we got to get that correct because I don't. Jamie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, but we're gonna be talking today. I know. Sometimes a lot of people uh, don't enjoy element one fifteen. Yes, element, we were close. Element one fifteen. So yes, that's what it was. So we can do. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll talk about a, we'll do a Bob Lazar episode and we'll do a, a, a single seven episode when Larry comes in town. Absolutely, because that'd be a lot of fun. Uh, but today, hey, I think I actually sorry. No, go ahead. Whenever Larry comes in town, we need to talk to him about the Bob Lazar as well, because a lot of the where he was at stationed. Mm -hmm was kind of pretty similar to what Bob Lazar was explaining. So, with Larry. <laughs> yes. And you know Larry well. Very well. Very well. And I knew the team of people he was working with yes. very well. 
Yes. Now, for, I've heard <clears throat> I've heard rumors that there also is proof of alien life or alien crafts at Area 52. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't, you know, I'm sure Larry's it's a national security thing you really can't talk about it's classified but uh, i've talked to him about it here's what i'll tell you he was an officer and he was working on a project okay that he i'm sure he can talk about it when he's here um he was like a level three or something like that and he'll yeah. he'll tell us when he's here uh the point of the story is there were about four or five more levels up to keep going back yeah. into the base so he was like only on level like two or three and he was an officer which means there's other things going on past level two or three that sure. he has no idea what was happening yeah and everything's compartmentalized there I yeah, mean, yeah they, you, they make like, it that way it's on a need to know basis from yeah, i mean even the president's down pretty low right. on on that kind of well, stuff and that's how it actually. was when i was an assassin for the cia yeah <laughs> it's just a need to know basis so. right right <laughs> garrett the assassin garrett the assassin what's your son-in-law do he's an assassin he's an assassin yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I was uh, the other day. I was listening to some old Art Bell um, episodes, and one that came up that was intriguing to me was Bugs, the Bigfoot killer. <laughs> so I know. Wait, was that his name, Bugs? Well, that was his anonymous Pseudo- name. His pseudonym. Su- pseudonym. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't want anybody to know what his real name was, so he went by Bugs, and he just sounded like an old country boy from Texas, you yeah. know, and uh, Bugs was a hunter and he had two friends bird dog and jim of course <laughs> get, are you serious bird dog yeah okay. bird dog and jim bird dog and jim and they were bobcat hunters and coyote hunters so apparently that's pretty cool yeah apparently the pelts f- from these animals they he said were from 300 to 700 dollars really piece. he said he would he told art he said art he said there's some nights i would come home with 2500 dollars worth of pelts we're in, in the wrong one, business Keith. god i know i know right and one thing he mentioned, which maybe one of our listeners knows, um, he said for some reason, because if you killed a bobcat before the freeze, their pelt would turn blue. If you waited after the freeze, it would turn white. Interesting. And so you tried to get them before the freeze, and you'd have a blue kind of a... a and that's a bobcat? Yeah, that's a bobcat. After the freeze, they turn white. Who knows, you know? <laughs> hey, my friend yes. went hunting. He, oh, I thought you were saying my friend. My friend, yes, you remember. <laughs> um, he killed a coyote yesterday. Yeah. Because they eat the deer and stuff, so you know he's out there. He shoots it through the neck with an arrow. Oh my! It God. lived. It only lived for ten seconds after that. He said. Sure. So I said, hey, because I, I like to collect skulls, which is interesting. So you're getting a skull. So no, I was like, hey, can you give me the skull, man? He's like, I was like, what'd you do with it? He said, oh, I put it out there for the other coyotes to eat. <laughs> I was like, wait, the other coyotes eat? He's like, if it's dead, they're gonna eat it. Is that crazy? They're cannibals. Man, they're scavengers. They, I think they, they eat anything. You know, the other day, well, not the other day, but probably Watch about your kids. three months ago, I, w- <laughs> I was coming down 59th Street. Did you get I, one? No, I saw a coyote chasing a cat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that dumb cat went the wrong way, I'll oh, just tell you no. that. Yeah, the cat. Uh, I, bet, I bet that coyote got some claws, though. Cats can, when they're yeah, back into a I corner. That coyote was so much bigger than that cat, hungry. though. Yeah, and it was, you know, because in that field back there, those yeah. those. Coyotes, yeah, you hear them. Yeah, well, when we were you and Cass yeah. lived, where I used to live, you'd hear them just like it sounded like, like possession, demon possession. Yeah. People. Well, we lived right by a cow pasture. Yeah, yeah. So they're <laughs> out there all the time. But yeah, this this coyote was running across the street. This poor cat. If he would have went to the front of this house because he ran into a neighborhood, but where did he go? He went back where there's more of a field. And I was like, ass. you're you're done. <laughs> you're done. <laughs> you're done. So anyway, the pelts would turn blue. And so he said, so we had good hunting for about two months during the February. I, I guess you get more money if their their coat turns blue. So he's hunting a lot. Hunting a lot. Yeah. And um, he said this happened back in 1976. And they were hunting on some ranch land. and they Which were, he owns. Maybe. Okay. But he... Wouldn't give the location, but he did say it was Elm Creek. So, which is I've looked it up. Yeah. Elm Creek's pretty long. Yeah, it is, and it branches yeah. off of the Red River. It does, yes. So, um, they saw a creature squ- squatting down. You know, they're out getting ready to do their hunt, and they get they're driving their truck, and they see this creature, you know, squatting down, and they go, "What? What's that?" And so they all get out of the truck, 
And old bird dog, he's, he, he said, <laughs> bird dog f- starts to shooting at him. But <laughs> no, so what happens, they all three grabbed their rifles and it got up. And, Get them! Yeah, and it started running. <laughs> and they thought, you know, he kept saying he thought it was a bear, but he wasn't sure. Right. So let's just shoot it. Yeah, kill it. <laughs> you know? So all three men were unloading, I mean, very powerful <laughs> hunting rifles on this animal. So he said they, they hit it, it went down. He got back up and he said, "We commenced to firing again." So they all, you know, it's Is like a firing squad. Yeah. <laughs> so he said, uh, uh, "They all three started shooting at him again." Well, this time I guess he went over a fence and they couldn't see him. So they they said, "Let's go." Just try. leaped over a fence. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they couldn't see him after that, and so they follow him. Yeah, they said this creature is about seven, eight foot tall. So at this point, Keith, just speaking to you, from <laughs> human to human. Yeah. If you are unloading, just throwing lead into this animal, quote unquote animal, yep. and it gets up, runs, and then leaps over a fence, would you follow it? No. <laughs> I'd get my truck. You know, I, I don't. Here's the thing, though. I don't even know I would have fired at it because he kept saying, you know, it, he thought it was a man. Maybe it was a man. Maybe it wasn't a man. Maybe yeah. it was a bear. And, you know, he kept going back and forth. Yeah. Ugh. And so. They just knew that it was something unique. They probably got it. Kill yeah. It, kill it. So it, get, it gets up again. Okay. So they reloaded their weapons and begin firing again. Okay. okay. So now they've shot it at three times. You know, three guys unloaded yeah. on this thing. Um, and like I said, they said the creature went over the fence and he said uh, they started tracking it. And they said it's about 150 yards away when they started. Sh- that's a long way. That is. And I mean, can you? That's like okay. That's, that's a three. That's three. Well, 150. That's, that's a yeah. A football that's, and a half. Yeah. Filled. Uh, that's good lord. How, in that yeah. dark. But I guess he said they had scopes. And I guess did they have infrared scopes well, back in the day? I don't think probably then. But with three guys unloading rifles, yeah, chances they, are they're probably gonna hit it if they yeah. know the general area. So. They come across. They they start seeing blood. They, he says we can't. We came to a plum thicket. I'm not sure what a plum thicket is. Bird dog said, "Come on through this plum thicket." Yeah, and he said that they heard this growling noise. So he said he's the one who got elected to to go into the thicket. Bug, you're going in. Yeah, and they said it's because he had the most powerful handgun. He had a 44 Magnum. Nice, like Dirty it. Harry. Like Dirty Harry, and. Um, so he says he went through, he saw a large creature coming at him about eight feet. Now, he said this wasn't the one laying down because it was, this one was a female. It's coming at him? Coming at him. So, yes, what he said. So, Bug said he shot it several times with a 44 Magnum. And it dropped went, it. It dropped it. Okay. It went down. So, he said this creature had the features of um, like a female, it had breast. It had a vagina, um, but just covered in hair. And he said the, uh, let's see, I'm looking at my notes here, people. From head to toe. From head hair. to toe. Jeez, yeah, so he, then he said, so then a few feet from the female after she dropped, then they saw the male. So he said it had the features of a human, nose looked similar to a human, mouth looked like an ape, reddish brown hair all over the body, skin appeared leathery as well as the bottom of the feet. And it had six toes. Six? Six toes. Yeah. So he took the time to count the toes. It, well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I need to count these toes. And so here lies the big question for Bugs. Um, he said, Art, he goes, when I looked at this thing, he goes, then I thought maybe it was a deformed human being. <laughs> oh, God. So he, for a minute, he said it crossed his mind. Maybe, He's a murderer. Maybe I killed, like... Uh, a deformed mountain man and he felt bad he did yeah he did he was scared and he was scared to death right um but he said he, goes, he wasn't intending to kill a human he, no was, this thing was unhuman well and yeah and, and people kept sending art these um like messages saying why did why did this guy do this if he wasn't even sure why is he shooting at it and i encourage you guys also there's two interviews there's one of the original bugs talking to art and then there's another one with robert morgan now robert morgan is the authoritarian on bigfoot okay? okay he's the man that knows everything about bigfoot so he comes on the show now and bugs comes on and so you can tell he's irritated at the fact that he's like 
So this thing's on two legs. Do you think it might be a man and you and your buddies just start unloading on it? You know, and well, one of the things I mentioned to you too. Okay, so two things. First thing is if you look at the location, because I think you're probably going to get into the fact that Bugs sent Art a map of where the bodies were. Because I, yes. the first time he told me about this, I was like, so what the hell did he do with the bodies? What did he do with the bodies? Yeah, exactly. So what they, what happened is they, they thought, okay, we we've got to bury these bodies, right? Of course. So he said we got shovels, and he said the hole was five to six feet deep. So that's pretty. So I was yeah. thinking that took him some time. And he, <laughs> yeah. if you think about it, you know, he said that was during the winter time. I mean, that ground's Ooh. hard. So yeah, because it actually gets super cold down there. Where yeah. He's at night. Yeah. So anyway. well, and I mentioned to you if you look at the location of where supposedly this was. It is directly on the Mexico U.S. Mexico border. Is it really? So what I was thinking when I saw it was, man, what if it was like some immigrants like trying to come across the border or something? Hairy you know, immigrants with six hairy toes. Hairy immigrants <laughs> with six toes. You know, I don't know, but that's it like crossed my mind. Yeah, um, yeah. And then the second thing was I was like, okay, because you know I'm pretty skeptical about Bigfoot. Right. Right. The way I look at it, although they do find new species of life every day. Yes, right? they do. Most of those are insects or tiny squirrels with big ears and stuff, weird stuff. Right. Um, we've never seen, we've never seen a Bigfoot, or confirmed. We've never. I'm sorry. People have seen Bigfoot. We've never captured. We've never one, captured one. Right. Or DNA, but. But you you claim that there have been some DNA or. Yeah, there's been people, undetermined. Right, undetermined. It, it, um, people have found like hair and uh like in thorn bushes um and not that they're just looking for hair but right. they said where where they've seen bigfoots before they start searching the of whole course, area right, for yeah. scat everything just, yeah um one scouring guy scouring the location yeah and so like one guy um not too long ago uh found some scat that he thought was bigfoot turned it in i don't know if the results were on that i uh but i do know the hair and some other stuff that has been found it comes back of is um unknown interesting they can't identify it well when i asked you when you told me about the bug story the first time i said well where was this located and you said texas and i said oh not surprising if bigfoot was going to be stuck in any state in the country it would be freaking <laughs> texas because he's like sitting there like how am i going to get out of here everywhere i turn somebody has a gun they're going to kill me yeah right yeah. so of course he would just hide in texas <laughs> right right in the plum thickets in the plum thickets <laughs> yeah exactly so yeah i mean and the kind of i'll I'll share with the audience um, about my little Bigfoot story. Um, it's, it's not much of a story, but my dad and I was rabbit hunting on my uncle's land. I, I, I've, I've talked to Garrett about this before. And um, we came down towards a creek, and we saw these footprints leading to the creek. And they were like, you know, um, probably 18 inches long, 19, like a... Size pro, 13? Pro, yeah, like a so pro like basketball it. player's shoe or yeah. something, but it had this one had three had three toes and it didn't have five five or six toes. How thick were the toes? I know that sounds like a weird question, uh, you, but you know, I mean, like do it with your hand like that. Probably, yeah. So about they're big to, toes. Inch, <laughs> they're big. big. You know, they'd have to be to yeah, hold yeah. up hold up an eight foot animal. And I mean, the balance issues of holding yourself up with three toes, you know, would well, that's be, what's so important about the human foot. Oh, absolutely. The, the yeah, uh, big toe is extremely important. Oh, yeah. Without yeah. it, you're Without screwed. It, yeah, you're <laughs> very screwed. And so with a three-toed animal, that middle toe would probably have to be the stabilizer, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. So was the big toe, like, and, and your I'm pinky, not trying to flip you off, no, but <laughs> this one would have to be longer. Is that how it was, the you know, shape I, of it? Honestly, I don't remember. I just remember the... Well, Keith... Yeah, I know. The bottom hey, man, I was like uh, 11 years yeah. old, I think, or something like that when, when we saw this thing or saw the footprint. And it was going towards a body of water? It, well, it was it was going towards it, and then actually it looked like it was had squatted down like it was getting a drink or something because it seemed like, you know, the, it was, the, the footprints were, they got deeper. The last ones were right, deeper, yeah, like yeah. it was hunching down or something. Um, but, of course, you know, I guess the closer you get to – wet soil right, right, just yeah. naturally i so, mean maybe you're just walking past it and then, did your dad say he said what is that and he said i don't know but whatever it is i hope we don't find it no no that was my uncle <laughs> oh, so gonna... my dad and i we saw these prints and we we're like you start looking around yeah you know, i'm like holy shit yeah 
And so we uh, we we stopped hunting at that point, uh-huh. and we went back to my uncle's house, and we said, "You got to come out here and look at this." And we brought him up there, and he looked down at it. He's like, "Well," he goes, "Whatever that is," he goes, "I hope it's gone." <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> so, but yeah, so that uh, that's my little story. But so Bugs was wrestling the whole time with this. Uh, Oh my God! Did I kill a human? You know. Well, and this is like in the late nineties. No, no. This is, well, like no, when, no. When he called, right? Yes. And yeah. so, but this happened in the seventies, and I think you had mentioned that he was an elderly man. You know, I said that, and I went, I, I went back and listened, and Bugs was fifty-five years old. Then. Then, when he made that. Okay. Yeah. Still, though, so, at a point in his life where he's probably like, you know, he's still scared to even give his real name. He's scared. He when he sends the map. Okay, I'll let you talk about the map first. Yeah, so talk about the map. So what happens is, you know, um, he sent Art Bell a map of the exact location where these bodies are buried, and he told Art. He said, "At my death, Art, he goes, I want you to go dig these things up and turn them over to science or whatever you want. Whatever you want to do with them." Okay, so now Art was like, "I really wish you wouldn't have sent me these maps." Yeah. Um. Because he was afraid of prosecution as well. He thought, you know, what if this guy, I don't know bugs. Yeah. What if he's a homicidal maniac? He, right. And, and I end up uncovering two Serial human killer. bodies. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, he kind of didn't want any part any part of it, really. And and I kind of thought, man, it'd be so interesting if, you know, he and he told, you know, he told bugs, he said, hey, he goes, bugs, you sent me these maps. I'm not real happy with them. I don't know what to do with them. And he goes, well, Art, if you want to just burn them. And he goes, I, he goes, I've made copies. He goes, my wife has the the original copy. And the funny thing was with the other interview, the, the one they did three years later with Robert Morgan, you know, and bugs came back on that one. Yeah. Yeah. And Robert Morgan, of course, he's been looking for evidence for years. So he's like, Art, let's go. Yeah. And, you know, the guy kept going, well, do you think I'd be prosecuted? And Art was saying the same thing. He goes, absolutely not. He goes, Bugs, he goes, I'll even take the heat for you on this. Yeah. And he said, but this would be such a huge fine for humanity right. to find out that maybe there is there is this creature that I've been trying to prove <laughs> yeah, right. exists. And you could tell he, he was kind of like, hell the prosecution. Let's, let's, uh, yeah. let's find these things. Uh, because, but at first he was saying, you know, because I could tell Robert was – you know, Robert had said that he had seen Bigfoot's had relationships with them, and they were relationships. Yeah, where they were nice to him. They even left him gifts out of. What kind of gift did Bigfoot leave? <laughs> He's like, yeah, I needed you this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm thinking, what gifts did Bigfoot? Here's a scarf. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so he, so he was angry. I could tell he's angry that you know, God, you just unloaded on these creatures. And then he, he would say, some, he says something about the guy said, well, um, you know, I'm afraid of being prosecuted. He goes, well, he goes, yeah, he goes, I would be too. He goes, you know, you could get at the least manslaughter for something like that. Yeah. But then changed his tune as he started probably thinking about, hmm. I need to get this. Map. I could get these Bigfoots up and uh, yeah. prove this thing. Finally. So the conversation starts changing. He right. starts forgiving bugs and saying, oh, you know, I feel bad for bugs. Um and kept kind of push Art. He goes, Art, if we all go out there, and a guy and Bugs like, I ain't going anywhere out there. He goes, yeah. he goes, I'll point you all in the right direction. <laughs> he goes, but at, he goes, and you guys can go ahead and do it, which almost gets some validity to the story because what is this guy going to do if Art goes, okay, guys, let's meet. We'll meet at your your place. Yep. You show us where to go. You know, then Bugs is going to look like an idiot, right? Um, yeah, yeah. So, but he was more than willing. He's like, if, yeah, if you guys want to go out there. I'll, I'll I'll get you in the right direction, but I'm and not Art going out there. Art wouldn't do it. Art, was, I mean, you know, I'm I'm telling you, I think he was just afraid that he's involved in something. Involved, that he can't maybe he could get involved in a murder, and right, then he yeah. could be held responsible. He didn't even like having the map because he thought, well, now I'm an accessory. I know right. where these bodies are. I did not say anything to anybody. I didn't turn this guy in. Um, I want to know what happened to those maps. Okay, and that's the big question: is if any, and if anybody's listening to this, and like I said, this is one of our uh, one of our first podcasts, and we haven't done. We're going to do live ones in the future, but we are going to have a phone number set up. I mean, you can even leave a voicemail on this phone number if you'd like, and if you know what happened to Bugs, um, I've I've scoured the internet. 
all I find is just the Art Bell interviews. Hmm. I, you know, we don't have his real name. This was what thirty years ago, so he'd be in his eighties. He more than likely has passed away. Uh, but how many families do you think own land on that Elm Creek area by where the plum thickets are? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, and you know, if you're really serious about it, I mean, even how long it would take, you could get a crew of men out there with bulldozers, whatever, and just start at one point, get another bulldozer, another point, and just dig, 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 dig. I mean, if there's really two Bigfoots out there, I mean, it, it, it what's it going to hurt? But of course, you'd have to get permission from the landowners, right? And like uh, you, I told you, also outside of this conversation, kind of my, where my skepticism comes is like with UFOs. I'm a huge believer, you know. The, the science of it and just pure numbers tell us that there's extraterrestrials, right? There's right. something else out there. But with Bigfoot, it's just so weird for me because I'm like, how is this massive creature never been captured? It's hard for me to believe, too. I mean, even though I saw those three prints, because even, even three prints, I mean the three toes. Right. Even after I saw it, I, I still, have, I mean, because who knows what it was but it's like like you said i mean you've got something that sustained life for this long and is is reproducing obviously right and no one ever sees them really i mean yeah. you mean more like i talked we talked before about this and it's like more people have seen ufos than they've seen bigfoot and ufos are up in outer space <laughs> yeah. bigfoot's on the earth yeah you know uh have you ever uh like researched bigfoot sightings in other countries are there is there such no, a thing? No, but yeah, I think there are. Like, um, God, I can't remember. I'm sure there are. I've, right. I know I've read that somewhere, but yeah, because I think they have different names for them. Like, you know, we have Sasquatch Yeti, yeah. um, Bigfoot, and then they have other names for this creature. And there's even a school of thought about actually Bigfoot is an alien. Interesting. There had been a sighting, a UFO sighting, somewhere. Um, God, I, I wish I had my facts straight. It's like, I'm going to blend in. How are you going to blend in? I'm going to be eight foot tall, yeah. covered in hair, and kind of look like you. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to have huge feet. There, well, yeah. I mean, there was a story. Of, uh, some guy saw a UFO, and then shortly, a few minutes later, a Bigfoot came walking out of the woods. So <laughs> Eating beef jerky? Was it eating beef jerky? He was not eating beef jerky. He, he wasn't throwing snakes at anybody. <laughs> So yeah, it's, it's uh, but there's a community of people out there that are true believers. Oh, absolutely, dude. There's uh, TV shows on like uh, all over the network about hunting Bigfoot. I think it's right. one of the newer shows. I think Robert Morgan's uh, may be involved in that, possibly. Um, I'm trying to think now. I think Robert. If I, I hope I'm not telling you people wrong, but I think Robert is now in a nursing home. Okay. Because I saw, I went to his um, Facebook, and someone put up Robert would be appreciative if anybody wants to send letter, letters to him. Did you um, send a letter? I did not. What is wrong with you? I know, right? And but, and I'm pretty sure it's almost to the point where I'm in front of a computer, everybody. But I'm, we're recording this as well. But I'm almost wanting to grab Facebook to make sure that that's who it is and i'm pretty sure it is yeah. it's robert morgan he's he's in a nurse yeah now it's coming back yeah it, he's in a nursing home now so he's not hunting bigfoot he was involved with a lot of these tv shows um i wonder what the earliest sighting of bigfoot documented i don't know that's a good question that's a good question i'm hmm. um, probably the 1800s i bet it goes back further than oh, that. oh yeah probably does probably folklore does. yeah yeah, and which could be you know something that's passed down generation to generation, and becomes almost this exciting thing that we really want to be true. Right, right. So I mean, how, so where are you at on? I mean, you you said you're very skeptical about that. I still do. Am. You think it's it's possible? I think for, it's I think it's possible. If we haven't found it yet, it's definitely possible. Impossibility would, is a man made invention. Keith. Yeah. We would yep. know. We would not know what is possible and what is impossible unless we came up with that idea in our head. So for me, if we haven't seen it, there's no way to discredit it. That's true. But so, it's like, uh, but I'm I'm with you. It's like um, evidence how does something that big. <laughs> hide? Yeah. And where does it live? Right. And there, you know, you do hear people talk about families of Bigfoot, 
So, well, here's how have yeah. these people been? Yeah. Do they all walk together? Yeah, or? Three. You know, three-year-old is my three-year-old. But I guess if you think about, okay, say there's a lot of sightings in the Pacific Northwest, right? Which is, Are there? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, which is, you know, I mean, you could get lost out there. Okay, so that that was the point I was going to make as I was talking with my wife recently. And I was like, man, think about all the places, even in the state of Oklahoma, that probably nobody's touched in 150 years. Yeah. There are locations in our state that no one has stepped foot in for 150, 200 years. Guarantee it. Oh sure, one hundred percent. Sure, and then if you're talking, you know, we're we're flatland, you right. know, we're plain. So when you talk about Pacific Northwest, you're talking about you know, uh, dense vegetation, dense, dense vegetation, yeah. dense forest, you know, altitude changes. Exactly, and there's I'm sure there's all sorts of places no one's ever been. Damn to near inhabitable. There. Right, right. So I mean, and it's vast, and that's the thing about Oklahoma is it's vast countryside. Yeah. So sometimes I'll be driving down and I'll look at a field like when I'm out in the boonies. Is that is that okay to say? What are the boonies? I don't know. Anyways, out there. The boonies. The boonies. And uh, I'll be like, man, I bet no one's been out there in so long. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's so maybe that's where Bigfoot would be able to, you know. And they say he's a vegetarian. Yeah, what? But how could something that muscular and that big be a vegetarian? And how much work could Bigfoot be doing to work his muscles? Right, because he's hiding constantly. He's hiding constantly, and he's just doing just a lot of walking. A freak athlete. Yeah, <laughs> just jumping over fences, getting shot by bullets, like. Yeah, so I mean, and have you seen film footage of what supposedly is Bigfoot? Yeah, like, and I will tell like you, the famous Patterson film. Somebody took um, a video of me walking across the court one yeah, time. Exactly. It was really grainy, and <laughs> <laughs> my brother looked at it. He said, "You look like Bigfoot." <laughs> so, you know, maybe I'm Bigfoot. Maybe, but they say the Roger Patterson video. Um, I mean, they've, they've had scientists look at it and said it can't be a costume because I'm because of the muscle contractions of the legs when it's walking. And, Interesting. but I don't know. I right. mean, and there's so many theories on that, that video. Cause then someone said that actually that, uh, he had came out and said, yeah, we faked this. I, we had a Bigfoot costume in the back of the car. Right. Yep. Yeah. And, and I don't know what happened in that story because I, even recently there's people still refer to that film all the time. The Patterson really? film, the Patterson film. Yeah. And, and then they, course they go right to the scientist who studied this film and said yes this is some type of creature because i can tell by the the muscles the way the joints are you know are moving or and the muscles are moving and so who knows man you know it's just it's it's wacky i watched a uh, a film recently on um on about bigfoot I'm, did you? To, I'm gonna try to find the name of it really fast give me five seconds when did you watch this um maybe last month the man who killed uh Hitler. Liberty Valance. The, <laughs> the man who killed Hitler and then Bigfoot. Was it Bugs? Dude, Sam Elliott is in it. Oh, so you gotta love Sam Elliott. Okay, yeah. So this is a what a fictional movie then, right? It is. It okay. is. I you but a it's kind of interesting documentary because what they do is they have they actually know in the movie. Yeah. They know where he is, where Bigfoot is, and he's somewhere in Canada, and they're afraid that if he escapes, that you know it's going to cause people to freak out and there's going to be chaos. So they got him inside of a bubble. They're keeping Bigfoot inside of so a, they did a bubble. So cap, they did capture Bigfoot inside and they of have his, him in a bubble. Yeah, but nobody, only the person who was able to assassinate Hitler has the skills to do that would be able to go in and finish the job on Bigfoot. And that's got to be Sam Elliott. Sam Elliott. He's the man, isn't he? They're like, yeah. They, he's, they, he's they a had to convince man. him. He's like, I'm done killing. And then, <laughs> <laughs> you know. I ain't going out. Yeah. <laughs> this sounds like the Rambo movie. Yeah, exactly. John, we need you. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with all that. <laughs> I'm done with all that. I ain't killing no more. Yeah, yeah. So no, but I I'm very skeptical just because on the evidence side of things and the science side of it. But um, like I said, anything is possible until proven otherwise. That's true. That's true. It's just interesting. So and like I said, if if you're listening to this podcast, and of course it's not live, so you'll be hearing it after we record it. Um, we will release a phone number soon and. Uh, and an email and an email yeah because I, I want i want a bigfoot fanatic to call up or email us <laughs> I do too. and i want I, them to convince me i want me. you to convince me and <laughs> me too even though you know even even seeing that footprint it's still hard for me to believe i had a three-legged turtle recently 
<laughs> I'm just saying, its prints were different than a four-legged turtle. So that's where I'm at. Like if I were to yeah. see a print, I would everything in my mind would be saying, okay, obviously, maybe it's muddy. It was sliding. You know. Yeah, look, exactly. And, and so maybe maybe it was a human, and they were like maybe like you said, they slid. Their their foot kind of right. went up. So just the three toes. Uh, who knows? But it didn't look like that. See, and that's kind of that. Well, that's what I love about the paranormal side of this podcast is that we have some pretty strong evidence, right? Some yeah. ex- actual experiences, and it's very well known. So I'm curious with that side of things because we have a, lo- a huge database of people that can call in. Yeah. So, but I know there's another demographic of people out there that are involved in the Bigfoot community, and I want to know why. Like I le- legitimately, I care to know why. Yeah, I mean it, anybody who puts so much time. I mean, because there's some bigfoot fanatics. I there's mean, a reason. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they have such strong convictions this creature is alive that they're willing, you know, quit their jobs and they yeah. become a full time bigfoot hunter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like you know, I, I if you get a chance, watch. It's called I think. Um, bigfoot hunters or something like that i've heard of it yeah yeah and and it's basically but it's one of those shows with the uh they never find the the big elephant in the room there's (laughs) a they're never going to find him it's right (laughs) you know i don't know if you ever there's a funny show well it's supposed to be serious i guess it's it's called mountain monsters and these guys are searching for you know not only bigfoot but the mothman and all these other things and and you for the you, listeners, I just rolled my eyes almost out of my head. Yeah, yeah. And so it's one of those things where you watch it for the entertainment value oh, of, course. of it, of course. And, and you know every episode you're getting ready to watch, they're not going to find anything. See, and that's and why was, I can't watch them. They would set these two, Garrett, Garrett <laughs> they had, so they had this these two guys who were who are, who are they build the traps for the Bigfoot, right? So they'll build, build some big cage. Is it called the Big tra- Ass Big Bigfoot Trap? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> And uh, they'll hide it and brush and everything. And the stories, every show ends like this. Man, if he would have stepped over one foot, we would have got him. (laughs) We were close, guys. We were close today, boy. You know, it's always like, if he's one foot, I mean, if he just would have went this direction, we had him. (laughs) Every episode. Exactly. So every episode ends like that. And you know how it's going to end. They're not going to find him. It's going to be had he took one step. You know, over we would have had him, and but is this one of those things that we were talking about with paranormal, where um, people who have had this experience are oftentimes silent about it because I come up to you, normal, normal Garrett, and I'm like, dude, literally Bigfoot was just in my backyard. Yeah, yeah I'm, you know, I know. I if know. I can't catch yeah. him or kill him, yeah. I probably just won't say anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I swear, I swear he's back there. I know. And that's probably one of the, I mean, out of all the paranormal stuff, if you call that, if the if it's the classifies, it's unexplained. Yes, it is. Uh, that you probably would keep your mouth shut. About, I mean, because there's so much, to me, there's so much evidence of there's something on the other side there. There's something that goes bump in the night. And read what that poster says up there, Art Bell. To not believe is nearly impossible. Exactly. 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 And... But with Bigfoot, it's a whole different thing. I mean, we have these, you know, blurry videos or we Mm -hmm. have a footprint. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course, I know there's people out there going right now, well, oh, yeah, well, show me a real ghost video or something. Um, But I got some EVPs. Yeah, I've caught like, and that's something I'll share with you guys eventually. I I shared a little bit. Don't even get me started on this. Yeah. uh, I was skeptical about that, too. This house, I mean, we caught three EVPs here and also I, I, I did a uh, spirit box session God and worse. caught several things and some very very frightening things and uh, we we talked about that with Larry a little bit and I think we mm. played one of the spirit box sessions but we can have a show about that and we'll, and we're going to be having uh, Kathy Nance she is one of the paranormal Can't investigators who investigated my house and she's the one that caught the EVPs and um, I tell a lot of that story and one of the previous uh, um, podcast. So I I think the point that I want to make is that I don't care what anybody thinks about that. I don't care what any of our listeners think. I don't care what anybody listen. I, I believe that I was here for it. I saw it. I didn't believe in it. And then right. they freaked me out. Well, Garrett even had his own, you know, we had a, I had a 
this device called a K2 meter and it picks up ele- electromagnetic fields. And I let Garrett take it home. and Because I didn't believe it would work. Yeah, and he had some experiences with it. and I put batteries in it and it had a couple wires and all of a sudden it was talking. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's it's crazy. It's just, I mean... It's... Let me clarify, when because a lot of people that listen to this probably know what a K2. Some people that listen to this will be like, what's a K2 meter? Yeah. It doesn't actually talk. When I say talking, it was blinking lights consistently for two hours, right. answering questions yes or no. And then other times it would not work at all. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's, it's basically a meter that uh, it, it, most of our audience, I'm sure if you're into the paranormal, if you've watched Ghost Hunters, Ghost Adventures, all those ghost shows, they always talk about the K2 meter and they usually have the K2 meter with them on an investigation. And it's basically something they'll use to ask questions, like have it to blink twice for yes, one for no. And that's how they communicate with the spirits. With it. Think about how far technology has come since we used that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was a very, I, man, I don't want to use the word archaic, but we'll go, you, listeners, you'll hear it in our next, one of our upcoming Well, they have the o- Ovulus now. Have you heard of that? No. Well, I mean, that's to my point, though, is that it was literally so just batteries, wire. It mm-hmm. was, and I hate to call it a kid's toy because when I did it in another recording, you're like, oh, man, it's not a kid's toy. And I'm like, yeah, but. It's like a remote you would use for a children's. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, so for it to work, it's like mind blowing. It's like, what? Yeah. Is- well, you know, the first, the basically is just, uh, is measuring EMF. Now we've had EMF detectors for years. Right. I mean, years and years, they were analog. So they just had the little meter, right. you know, and the little dial going. So this guy just it made a digital form of it basically. And, you know, probably building it. He's, you know, sourcing parts from china or whatever and i oop, don't i'm not saying anything bad about china love china love china <laughs> but i'm just saying the um you know so he's probably trying to make it cost effective that he can make a profit off it of course well of course but it's a great but, but he yeah, doesn't it's a great need device. to even make it any better than it was because oh, if yeah. you're in a place where you're picking up those electromagnetic pulses mm-hmm. and it's answering you yes and no yeah it doesn't matter if it's a rock Oh, I know. If I said, hey, rock, bounce twice off the ground, if he, <laughs> and it did it, you'd be like, oh, my God, that just happened. Yeah, that works. And so I experienced that. So any callers that call in and be like, I want scientific proof, I'll be like, well, come on over. Yeah. Have you seen the Ovulus? I haven't. The Ovulus, it's a, uh, it's a black box, and it's basically a dictionary in, a, in, in this contraption. Um, Neat. And it, it can be manipulated so that they can basically put the word up on the screen like if they were to say yes they would just put yes wow. or murder they could put murder interesting and it, and well, it let's ta- hope that it would say murder. yeah yeah well i mean some of them i think they do <laughs> yeah. but uh how they died you know and it says yeah, murdered yeah, or yeah. murder or right. something like that but yeah it, it uh and it also have you seen videos of that yeah working? oh yeah 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 garrett you've got to keep up on the ghost shows man, man i go to you i yeah um but that's where I, I've seen him was on the ghost shows. But it also will, like, if it says a word, it'll say murder, you know, Weird. demon. demon. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Yeah. Demon. Well, hey, some <laughs> of the EVPs we picked up have sounded like that. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. Garrett just brought up a, we, we did a podcast last night um, and I was doing post-production on it. I was doing some editing and. I had the headphones on and I was talking and right after I talked, this unknown voice said no on it. It's very faint, but it's there. We said, um, we said, uh, has the lady, you asked me, you said, something about had the lady been dead long and on the background here? No. Yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. What in the world? I don't know. And I tried to debunk it. I, I, you know, at first I thought, Hey, I figured this out. This was my son. We, my studio is actually a bedroom in here <laughs> that we converted in. I have a whole family outside this door. And I have my son, uh, I thought maybe it was he, it was he that was saying that, right? But Garrett said that uh, my son had left earlier that evening and and he wasn't even, he wasn't even in the house, (laughs) which I hated to hear that because it's like, I don't want (laughs) that stuff anymore. I mean, I went through that for years and years and got rid of it. Well, the other odd thing that happened though was that, and I'm not going to say what it said, but a clip of me speaking 
somehow got transported to the very <laughs> end of the podcast and it was out of nowhere. That was from like what you yeah. said could be, um, you had a word for it. Artifact. Could have been artifact. But that would be, it doesn't make sense because that's you have a, to pull from a completely was, different file. Well, yeah, it was, it was, it was a complete clean recording. So basically yeah. I don't, you know, it's not like I opened up a second project and, and wiped anything out. I opened up a brand new project when I, every, anytime I record something, I open right. up a brand new project. Right. So it's a clean slate. And yeah, it had you basically talking at the very end of it. Not yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and it sped my and, voice up. And then you said, do you remember what it said right before that? Cause it, it's your voice. Yeah. And then there's this faint voice that sounds like you. And when I heard, I was like, now how did that happen? Because it didn't make any sense to me. Well, can I tell you that when I heard it, I knew immediately it was my voice, Yeah. but I got the chills. And, yeah. you know, like if you listen to like the Long Island media, you know, I love the medium shows. Right, right. As they say that if you get the chills and there's something that there's a presence yeah, near you trying to give you a heads up. Yeah. Right? They're like, oh, hey, I'm here. Like what you just heard wasn't you. It may have been your voice, but it wasn't right. you making that happen. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, who knows? And I man. didn't mention it to you because I was freaking out a little bit. Yeah, it was weird. <laughs> it was weird because it was your because it, it was a sped up version of my voice. That not not for profit. And that makes no sense <laughs> because no there's no reason it should have sped your voice up. And, and there should be absolutely no reason that was there. That was at the very end of our podcast. So there should have been nothing, just blank, right. blank, nothing. Closed out, faded out. Right. Because when I faded it out and, and uh, I was listening to it, and I was like, you know, and that was the thing, too, is like when after we finished the po podcast and you got up, I don't. I didn't remember you saying anything. I didn't because my kids were out there and I was like, oh, okay, I got to go grab my kids. I got to take them there. I right, do right. This. We had a lot to do. And so I just ran, I just <laughs> ran out the door. I wasn't talking about non for profits. Or yeah. Anything. So it freaked me out a little bit because, especially when you told me, well, because I was like, I actually felt relief because I yeah. thought, okay, that's on that first one that said no. I thought, okay, well, that's Dylan. Yeah. Okay, solve. Good. I don't have, you know, any. Done. Yeah. I don't have any spirits around here. And then when I, Yesterday I heard that voice. I thought, I listened, listen. I thought, okay, that's Garrett's voice. So yeah. I bet he was on the phone. He got up and he was talking to someone my call log. on the way out. I did not make a phone call on my way out. Yeah, Garrett's a businessman, so he's always on the phone. And I am. he's talking all the time. So it would have been very natural for Garrett right. to grab a phone call on the way out. But I didn't remember that. And we deal with nonprofits and things like that. Yeah. And so when you first told me that, I was like, oh, maybe I was on the phone. And right. so I checked my call log. <laughs> I didn't make a call for like four hours, dude. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, I was like, man, please, please have made a phone call. Yeah. 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 Especially after I heard it. That's why I was like, let me check this call log. Nope. Yeah. I'll, I'll share this with the audience. It's, you know, when I had this idea to do the podcast, I, I discussed this with Garrett. I was like, I was a little hesitant because, um, as you'll hear in one of my podcasts, I had a haunting for a gazillion years, it seemed like, and finally got rid of it. And I know that sometimes talking about this stuff um, and bringing that stuff up can attract spirits sometimes is what they say. And so, knock on wood so far, other than that, nothing's happened. Oh, uh, wait. What? You and I were having a conversation leading up to one of our first recordings. And we were talking about how if we're like, um, can a spirit go into like a device? We were talking about the device when Pam got the picture and right, right. And then all of a sudden, silence. And I was like, okay, well, Keith's phone just died. So I call you back and went straight to voicemail. And then you called me back and went straight to voicemail. And you're like, oh, Garrett's phone died. Yeah. So then we got back on. And I was like, yeah, did your phone die? And you're like. I thought your phone died. And I was like, no. Yeah. Yeah, I do. It yeah, I do coming. remember that. So we were like, okay, why did but, that happen? Yeah. But I try, Which that could happen, you know. Absolutely. And I, and I, tr and I, I'm trying not to be one of those people that want to blame everything right. on a demon right, or right, a ghost right. or 100%. Yeah. Yeah. But it was so, just a, kind of a weird thing. And I was like, okay, yeah, I just, but then, weird timing because had we not planned doing this podcast that happened, we probably wouldn't even thought about it. No, no, you no. You know no, what no, I mean? Yeah. So it just happened, but it's like, uh, we'll know as we carry on through this podcast, if weird things starts happening, we'll it, let you know, we'll let you know. <laughs> I mean, it, and we'll play it for you too. So, um, well, and we also, you have, because of your experiences now met people that have helped you, helped you get over that tumultuous time you had, because that's when Cass and I, we just had a kid, you know, and yeah. I, I vividly remember all of that happening. The crazy thing, Keith, I told you after we aired the other night, is that whenever Kathy helped you cleanse the house, mm -hmm. is that it felt 
lighter in here, and it has ever since. Yeah, that's probably yeah. been what seven or eight years ago. Uh, two thousand ten. So no, ten no, 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 no. That was the first haunting that came in a bit. No, that would have been. Let's see. Oh two thousand thirteen. I thought two, you said no, no, no. I think I looked at the. You know, I was I was checking some emails the other day because I sent her right. some EVPs to see if I still had them, and I believe it was. 2012 so eight years ago yeah yeah and so it's eight just years been ago. calm right and, there, I, wa- and of, I wanted to remain that way yeah because <laughs> Cass and i about 2009 so that was about three years there where yeah. it was very active it was wild things were happening yeah garrett would uh when he was dating my daughter he'd come over here and sometimes he'd stay the night on the couch and he would have weird things happening and kind of the same things pam and i experienced with Especially in the kitchen. It, we would hear drawers opening. And we'd what hear are they place doing? Friendly. I'm trying to sleep. What are they doing in the kitchen yeah. at 3 in the now morning? I, now, I'm known, like I, I mentioned on the other podcast, to get up at 2 in the morning and have a snack. But I know you also looked. I at, went and checked. Yeah, and I did, and me the same thing. Like when I was, if I was in the living room watching TV and I heard, you know, the drawer open, I'm thinking yeah. it's a kid. And I always looked, and, and some sometimes there was a kid, yeah. but there's a whole lot of times when there wasn't a well, kid. Well, here, here was the thing. Besides the, the noises and the lights going on and off in the kitchen, the thing that really got me is the shadow figure um, yeah. feeling. Yeah. Because I don't think I ever saw a shadow figure, but I always had a feeling somebody was walking by that hallway. Right. And so it would, to the point where I felt it, so I'd turn around and look, no one's there. Yeah, well, thank God you didn't see the rocker rocking by itself in the living room yeah. where you were sleeping behind you. Oh my God. Yeah, I mean, that's that happened, you know, <laughs> yeah. when I walked in the living room and, yeah. you know, it was three in the morning and the freaking rocking chair is going by itself. And I'm like, okay, yeah, that's great. Normal. Yeah, that's well, normal. And it was then, yeah. you know, I mean, uh, the lamps going on and off. That was another thing that used to happen. I forgot to mention the other day. Uh, lamp would go on and off constantly, The my bedside lamp. And, it, you know, it's just as a spirit trying to get your attention, I guess, but you know, and everything was pretty quiet, but it was until I, you know, started getting sloppy with the spirit box (laughs) and, and brought that evil entity in the house. And, but thank God, Kathy removed it. It's gone. I hadn't had anything else happen. See, and I think this circling back around to the the Bigfoot conversation we're having earlier Mm -hmm. is that you have, uh, you're hyper aware of it now. Oh yeah. I'm hyper aware of it now. Right. And so if something happens that sticks out to me, I'm like, I can kind of feel that. With Bigfoot, I'm not hyper aware of it because I've never seen a Bigfoot. And they're probably walking around you all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, that's where I get skeptical is like, but maybe I'm just not hyper aware because I've never had well, the experience. Well, say that about the paranormal. Um, I mean, that's something Art used to say, too. It's just like... Uh, you're so caught up in life that you don't stop right. and look around and you don't notice certain things that are supernatural that are happening because you're too busy doing other stuff. You know, um, you're concentrating on something and there could be things going on oh, around 100%. you and you just don't know. Uh, 100%. Well, and that's why probably kids are more susceptible to having experiences sure. than adults because when you're an adult, you're worried about getting to work, getting your kids fed. Putting yeah, and I think table. they're closer to the spirit world because they just came from the spirit world. Right. You know, just like, uh, and we're going to have a show on reincarnation, you know, like that, that boy yes, who remember <laughs> being a World yeah. War II pilot who uh, died in a, a crash. His plane got shot down. Right. And he... I cannot wait for that episode. Yeah. Yeah. And we need to try to get him on if yes, we can. Uh, either him or his folks. I'm trying. Have you talked to the people? I, have you? I liked a lot of their stuff. Well, you got to do more region. than that, I baby. Will. I will, baby. I mean, yeah. I sent, I sent, like, I sent Barry, Doctor Barry Taff, uh, yeah. a, a message on, on uh, Facebook. See, but he's used to it. Well, you know, and a lot of people, though, you got to remember too. It's, um, he's a lot of people don't even look at their messenger. I mean, right. they'll, they'll, and you, and you see, like, they're putting up posts every day, and you're like, why is he answering my message? Right? Yeah, yeah. Because some people don't. I mean, he probably gets a hundred a day. Right. See, and I'm you thinking know. like with these people though, the reason why it's different like in approaching it is because, man, like they also went on a limb. Whenever they did that, it was like either 20, 20 or 60 minutes. Some, yeah, they did. Because it was actually Chris Cuomo. Did you realize that? Yeah, that yeah. was Chris Cuomo doing the interview. Yeah, yeah. And so um, it was somebody that's legitimate and they kind of went out on a limb. And the grandmother was the one that was like, 
she's the one that was like, this is really happening. And the dad mm-hmm. was like, it's not either. Yeah, the like, dad was like a total non-believer yeah. until evidence kept showing up. And yeah, he just it kept couldn't getting more it and, and more. And then that damn doctor who came on and was like, oh, oh, they're putting this in this kid's head. I'm like, the kid's two years old. Yeah, kid's two years old. I tried to put awesome things yeah, in my he, two-year-old's head right what he, do they do yeah pick I mean, their boogers and eat them i'm like you know exactly like, <laughs> exactly <laughs> like it's like how did this two-year-old know what a corsair was <laughs> yeah you know and, oh, well, and the he, names of the guys that were on the ship on the with ship him. with him and that were fact checked. Like, I mean, you know, how, how many two year olds do you know talking about World War II history? Right. That you yeah, would even right. hear yeah. something like that to right. even talk about but it. But the great thing about that story is that they can go back into the records and they can yes. actually look and they see that that was legit. They looked it up. They found him. They found his buddy, was it Frank, I think? I can't remember the but names. They even contacted that guy and he said, I, and he even said, I believe this was yep. Jim or James, yeah. you know, the pilot. Even the way he died. Right. Yeah. He said, yeah, the kid said, you know, the dad asked where on the plane did it get hit? And the kid pointed, you know, on his model plane right here, dad, right, right in the left front or something like yeah. that. And the pilot that was flying next to him, when he got shot down, they asked him the same question. He said, yeah, he got shot right here on the front. And it was exactly yeah. where the kid had said it was. Sh- he he was even shot. knew on the map it was in the South Pacific. Yeah, absolutely. Which is how they started being able to narrow it down. They're like, okay, fighter pilot, South Pacific, we've got a name. You know, I think he knew the name of the uh, mm-hmm. the carrier. He did. He did. And they looked at, yeah, so it's a two-year-old. It's like, how, it, yeah. that It goes back to that thing. You, it goes back to that thing because it scares people, man. Yes. That doctor, I mean, people do not want to believe that stuff happens. Uh, well, it also goes back to that thing of consistency that we talked about with Bob Lazar, that we talked about with Single Seven. Yeah. It's the same thing with this kid. I mean, the story was so consistent with Bob Lazar. It's been consistent for going on 40 years, 30, 40 years. Yeah. Um, with single seven, he, how long was that interview? Three hours? Uh, well, I, he had to go. No, like, he had to go. Yeah. He had to, he had <laughs> he to get gonna, out of there. He was going to get tracked. Yeah. So, um, but it was, for it was about an hour and a half, I an think. hour and a half of consistency yeah. where no hiccups, where an interviewer, a very good veteran interviewer, right. Mm-hmm. Was sitting there trying to get this guy to trip up and he wouldn't. So when it's con- that consistent, that's where you start being like, Oh my God. Yeah, Art was just dumbfounded. And you could hear Art, too. Yeah, like, yeah. Art was just trying to get this guy to and screw he, he up. Just, and, and finally, he was like, throw up his hands. I'm like, well, I guess he's right on yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. My good man, I guess. You know, yeah, like, yeah. He couldn't. There was nothing there. I mean, he, he answered. He, even the, you know, Art was so intelligent about radio. Um, he understood electrons and all that stuff. And when the guy started talking deep, Art understood that, right. and so Art would know he was full of BS, right? right yeah. So he would. So the, I remember the guy saying something about being bombarded with plasma or something about the time machine. He goes, "Well, that would be correct." Yeah, sir, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So that's just it's correct. We totally got off of Bigfoot, didn't we? Hey, it's fine. That's fine. Yeah, I mean, and it's. But anyway, so I guess the the bottom line on the Bigfoot thing is, if anybody out there knows the continuation of the story whether they found out this was faked uh or you're or talking the, about the bug story bugs yeah i'm going back to that just so we can r- wrap that dog. wrap that part up of it yeah. um yeah is if anybody knows the continuation of the bugs guy did they find the map did they actually look or was this a hoax was it proven to be a hoax did they find out the guy's identity um yeah, me and Garrett had joked around about taking a trip to Elm Creek with shovels. So. <laughs> Can I add something? Sure. And for you Bigfoot, that Bigfoot community out there, that yeah. Sasquatch squad. They would know, you would think, right? It, well, and if they don't, if they have something for us that they need to send over or they need to call in and, and let us know, they got to do it. Yeah. This is the place yeah. to do it. That's, and man, see, that's why I want to go live so bad. We will. And I want to go live so bad on this. Hey, and we're going to revisit it because people are going to email us and people are going to send yeah, us yeah. things and we're going to look at it and we're going to be like, this is bull crap. Or this is very intriguing. Right. And then when we go live, we'll invite those people on. Absolutely. State your case. Yeah. Yeah. Be a guest on the show. Absolutely. You know, if you if you have proof of Bigfoot or if you, or if you have proof that he's not real. Right. You know, I mean, like, this is very open form. I mean, we... Would it be difficult to have proof he's not real, though? <laughs> <laughs> is that kind of like... That's kind of stupid of me to say. Well, no, 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 I'm <laughs> not saying that, but I mean... No, it kind of was. It'd be way easier to prove he's not real. 
Um, <laughs> I am so going to edit that out. I may <laughs> leave it in just. I may leave it in because it's so funny that I said that. But uh, it just struck me. Sorry, I was. <laughs> well, you know, he, but here, here's what you could do on that though: is we could have one guy on the line who's for Bigfoot, the other guy's against exactly. it. So then they're given, you know, opposite evidence or right. It's probably the wrong way of putting it, but uh, they could argue about it. And That's what I we, we could chime in. Yeah. You know, what What proof do you have? And I guess the other guy's got it easy, doesn't he? Well, I guess there are people out there that probably are trying to prove that Bigfoot is not real. Yeah, well, I mean... And I wonder oh, how they would go about uh, trying to do ev- that, though. Everybody has an opinion. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, uh, who knows? Who knows? I mean, but I guarantee you they'll be... I'll, I'll call in, you know? To not believe is to, nearly impossible. To not believe is nearly impossible, as Art, Art said. Yeah, um... But anyway, so yeah, uh, I want to know what happened to that map. So I know there's a Bigfoot community out there, like Garrett said. I'm sure you guys are like going, oh my God, I wish I'd call in because I know the answer to that. Uh, and you're going to be able to. Uh, and further podcasts, I'm going to give you a phone number to, that you can start calling and leave voicemails. And we will get an email hooked up, uh, hooked up, right? Is that, that the right term? Get it hooked up to that landline. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and please call on a landline, as Art used to say. Do not call me on your cell phone. Or send, or send a fax. Yeah. Or send a fax. That's <laughs> wonderful. Isn't that great? Yeah. That just shows, again, how technology, <laughs> yeah. that was how you communicate with Art Bell, man. Yeah. He said, well, send me a fax. Did you get the fax? Did you yeah. get the fax? Well, that's fax. how everybody communicated I with know, him back before, know. you know, back in the 90s. They, yeah. There was no internet. Well, and he's out there in Nye County. Well, and, uh, well, that's how he, um, uh, got in touch with single seven, single yes. seven has sent him a fax <laughs> yes. about his story. And, yeah. and do you think single seven was like, how do I use this thing? Uh, he's like, I need to go to the library and ask how to use it's this. It's so prehistoric. <laughs> <Yeah>. He's like, <laughs> what is this? What does FAX stand for? <laughs> you know, I wonder if you have to before, if, if there are time travelers and he indeed was a time traveler. Did he have to take a course on this is the technology you're going to be dealing with? It. It's, it's much more primitive than what we're used to. Right. It's much slower. And uh, you you would almost have to. Yeah, because it would drive you insane. If I came from 2064 back to now, yeah. I'd be like, well, I got to like type in this stuff. What well, even it? like, okay, I was talking to you about this. Even doing this podcast, if we were to do this in the 50s, we would have huge reel-to-reel machines, right? We'd have huge tube compressors we'd have these microphones that weigh 50 pounds oh dude uh editing you go through the tape you actually cut it right yeah splice it put it together it's crazy i mean just doing digital that was an art form huh it it, absolutely you know i still have a reel-to-reel out there with the the little blade i've seen it thing where you you lay you lay the tape on now I'm not that old. I mean, I got into the digital age, so well, I never I think, had to do anything like that. I think it's important to say that Keith is a music connoisseur, and I hope that maybe in the future we'll do like a, an hour of music podcast, because I would love to ask you questions about your music history, by the way. Uh, yeah. I mean, He's got all sorts of recording equipment. This thing is legit, the studio we're in right now. Yeah, it's uh, it's we got some nice stuff that we're working with. We've got some good microphones and uh you know, and that was this one thing I thought, man, I've, I wanted to do a podcast. I was like, I've got everything to do it. I've got studio mics. I've got recording software. A great personality. A great personality and a great radio voice. <laughs> you no? do have, dude. Your radio <laughs> voice is on point. <laughs> no, so it, so it made it easy to go ahead and make this decision because it's like, okay, I don't have to spend thousands of dollars. I've got most of the setup anyway already. So, you know, I just had to. By there, there's one missing things. piece though. What was that? Those Bigfoot communities. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And hey, speaking of which, there's your my daughter, your wife. Oh uh, yeah. Um, calling. We'll call her back, but we'll, we can go ahead and wrap this up yep. anyway. Um, but anyway, I'm Key Sharp. This is Garrett Dressel. <laughs> this is something that uh, we hope you will listen to. We're, we we plan on having a podcast out every week and uh then like i said we're planning hopefully really soon to go live where you can call in and uh and and join the conversation with us that's what we really want we want a discussion panel man and so anything left to say for you garrett no i'm good to go that was a great intriguing episode and i can't wait for everybody to hear it all right 
Well, we will see you guys next week. Uh, right now, our schedule is kind of weird, so we may have a guest. We may not have a guest, but I guarantee you the conversation, it will be interesting. So goodbye and good night to everyone. <laughs>